I'm sure by now everyone knows the story of Malala Yousafzai, the Pakistani girl who was targeted by the Taliban and then shot on a bus. But she has a lot more to her story and it was quite interesting to read about. I'm not the best at paying attention to reading or even reading books in general, so it was cool to see a book keep my interest like that. But back to the point of this video is the story of Malala, not the story of me not paying attention in third grade. I should have listened to my teacher, by the way, so listen to... Yeah, you know what I mean. Malala Yousafzai was born to the Pashtun tribe in a town called Mingora, which is in a valley called the Swat Valley. That's all in Pakistan, by the way. I love Pakistan! I will sacrifice my life for Pakistan! I love Pakistan! I wasn't present for her childhood, so I don't know what she did every single day after her birth, except for that she played with, but also hated her brothers, Kushal and Atal. Uh, I have no clue how to pronounce the name, so if you speak Arabic, please don't hurt me. Like, please, I don't know what I'm saying. I'll skip to when Malala starts going to school because this is the part that we can all relate to. And I understand if at this part you're not paying attention, but this is going to be very interesting, so pay attention. Her father owned a few schools, including the one Malala went to, but that caused conflict because of her town not wanting girls to go to school. But she still went to school because Malala doesn't take no for an answer. There was always a worry from the girls in that school because of the risk of the Taliban coming and taking over it, or even something worse. But that was never the case, at least when Malala was there during the day. Getting away from the boring beginning parts of the story into the interesting parts, Malala talks about an earthquake that devastated the people in northern Pakistan, and that the Muslim groups are taking advantage of the disaster by saying it was sent by Allah because they were not being good Muslims. So not halal mode. Now I understand the point of trying to take advantage of this at least, but I mean, aren't the isn't aren't the Taliban being not good Muslims? But I don't know. That's my opinion. But anyways, the next thing Malala talks about is this radio Malala guy. He basically comes onto the radio and talks about how he's a very religious and that everyone should follow Allah's word. But this ended up being a sham because he just said everything was haram. No kiss before marriage. And then talked about banning women from everything, which is pretty messed up, dude. Now, Fazlu is the name of this guy on the radio, and he's not a very happy person because when someone at a mosque got killed, he peed his pants a little and then ordered suicide bombings and then declared war on the government. I know that's such an overreaction, but Fazlula, like I said before, is a big meanie who hates women, so he ordered all of them to stay home. And he gets jealous that he didn't learn enough in school because his IQ is lower than a fish near me when I have a line out and a hook in the water. So because of his jealousy, the Pakistan Taliban starts blowing up schools. But Malala is stone cold when it comes to the Taliban. Her father started doing interviews with American and British news reporters, and so did she. For her safety, her name was Gold Makai. She wrote in a blog about being a Pakistani girl that goes to school and the challenges of being one, especially one in Pakistan. She gets the attention of a lady who is a student in the United States named Shisa Shaheed. Again, I don't know how to pronounce it, so excuse me if I said it wrong. But she's from Islamabad, which is Pakistan's capital city. So Malala gets to take a nice trip to Islamabad to see the freedom they have. Fazlullah finally decides that he's gonna ease up on the woman, sort of. And the Taliban doesn't like Malala because now they're just trying to kill her. But anyways, Fazlullah lets girls 10 years and younger to go to school. Malala pretends to be a year younger to go to school. It was empty, Th that's about it. A lady gets hit by a stick and then the people of SWAT have to evacuate because the army wants to chase the Taliban away. After all the people get back to school, it's deserted and war-torn, but the damage was all by the army who was trying to protect them. It make no sense. But Malala doesn't care about this, all she wants to do is become taller because she just got elected to represent a group that stands up for children in Pakistan. And she gets nominated by a bishop for a peace prize, and she still focuses on becoming taller. To shade things up and make things scarier, Malala's dad receives an anonymous letter that says his school is offending Allah which makes it way worse when his friend is shot. But he doesn't care because he's not shaken like his daughter. So he tells the woman that they have the right to go on a field trip, which as we all know, by now ended very badly. While on their field trip, the bus they are on is stopped at a military checkpoint. Some soldiers recognize the name of the school, get on, and yell who Malala is. But like, how do you not know who Malala is? But the soldiers eventually saw her and shot her and her friends. Poor Malala. She wakes up on October 16th and can't figure out anything because she's hooked up to so many things that it's probably more comfortable to be in an iron lung. The doctors tell her she's in Birmingham in England. Come on, England! 
and then she goes days and days writing father in a notebook and gets no answers. Over the weeks, she gets better and her family comes to see her. They tell her that after the bus driver realized she was shot, he drove her to the SWAT Central Hospital. They almost killed her there by saying she got grazed by the bullet. Who gave that doctor a degree? It was so obviously in her head still. But they flew her by helicopter to a military hospital where a doctor found out it was still in her head and her brain was swelling. He saved her life by removing a chunk of something. I have no clue what it is like because like most of you, I am not a doctor, but it allowed her swelling brain to well, keep swelling. So she didn't die. Then she was flown to Birmingham. Bro, man, you sent me a message first, yeah? I live in Smevic, Birmingham. If you want the f***ing brawl, come down to Smevic, ask for Daddy G. After almost being sent to a base where the Taliban might attack. And she wasn't attacked. And now she's in England. She has a few more surgeries to repair nerves in her brain. And then she has to stay to recover. She's released the next year. I don't know which month, but at least she's out of the hospital. As her family gets adjusted to their new apartment in England, the United Nations designates November 10th as Malala Day. She also gets a visit from Pakistan's president, and she has a robotic ear. And that's all there is to I am Malala. I have nothing else to say, so goodbye.